One of the divisions of Crescent Enterprises is, of course, Gulf Tainer. And I read recently that you're looking to expand into the U.S. Can you give us some more insight on that deal? So Crescent Enterprises uh, owns, operates, um, and runs uh, all the non-upstream oil and gas assets and uh, operations of the Crescent Group. Um, and uh, one of its uh, largest entities is Gulf Tainer. Uh, Gulf Tainer is a great example of a homegrown uh, company that has its roots uh, in from 1975, uh, based out of Sharjah. In fact, was established initially to operate the first ever container terminal in the Middle East, which was Port Khalid in Sharjah. Uh, and since then, has grown its operations, expanded its operations. One of its competitive advantages is, is uh, Gulf Tainer is known. Uh, by shipping liners and port, uh, ports around the world for being uh, one of, if not the fastest, uh, uh, most productive uh, operators in the world. So through that reputation and through that homegrown talent, we managed to export that into many other parts of the world. Uh, today we're operating in countries such as uh, Saudi Arabia and um, Kuwait and Russia and Brazil uh, and Lebanon and Turkey and Pakistan. Um, and. Uh, an exciting uh, venture and entry um, soon uh, will be in, in the United States of America, uh, owning and operating a port uh, there. Any clues as to where? It's on the East Coast uh, of America. Um, and it'll hopefully be an entry to other opportunities um, in, in the U.S. Uh, the, with the infrastructure boom uh, expected in the U.S. and actually ongoing right now as a result of the unconventional uh, uh, discoveries, um, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for logistics providers and those who are able to offer best-in-class service uh, and, and uh, high efficiencies uh, will have a competitive advantage and Gulf Tainer is, is one of those companies. And of course I have to ask, Dubai Ports World took some major heat when they tried to move into uh, U.S. markets about five years ago now. Are you expecting any kind of blowback? It, we're in a different time, in a different, uh, different period um, and uh, so no, uh, we're not and, and we're we're hoping to be embraced, and, and ultimately, you know, if we're able to to, to come in and, and to uh, and to use uh, our operational uh, efficiency and capabilities uh, to get things faster, to um, move goods around faster, and receive goods faster, and export goods faster, then that's uh, a win-win, a win-win situation. I do now want to specifically mention Dubai. They've just won the bid for the Expo 2020. You're from the UAE, and you yourself are a man of many parts. Uh, you're involved in theater. You're involved in music production. You've just produced um, some music with Quincy Jones. I have to ask you, would you say then that Dubai is going to be the next cultural capital of the Arab world? There is an increasing recognition uh, about the importance of the cultural economy. So seeing beyond just purely the entertainment aspects of uh, of, of the entertainment industry or uh, of, of, say, various aspects of the cultural economy, but seeing that it's an intrinsic part of, of sustainable economic growth. I think there is something to be said about uh, cultural diplomacy, and I don't think that enough of that is being done in the region or, let's say, used by the region. Um, it's, there's so much power associated with using your culture as a language, as a tool to create an affinity with other parts of the world. Um, I mean, the U.S. has done that very well. I think the UAE has tremendous potential to do that, and it is being recognized uh, by policymakers and businessmen and women alike that that's a huge opportunity. And I, I look forward to seeing some great examples of that coming up uh, in the next few years. When you look at the evolution of the Gulf countries, how is it that Dubai's gotten it so right? I mean, Dubai's catchphrase, you know, Dubai's open for business, is one that. Uh, it's true because Dubai has managed to successfully create uh, a level playing field when it comes to businesses uh, being able to set up and operate without having to compete with even say the government. Uh, that's something which is which is critical and I think from as a businessman I'd say um, has been a great success story for Dubai. Um, for that to happen of course leadership uh, is necessary uh, and Dubai with the, with, uh, the, the leadership of uh, Zionist uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, uh, and of course the, the complementary nature of uh, the other Emirates, uh, which has indeed also uh, been and played a huge uh, part in the success of Dubai, um, I think has, has created that sort of perfect uh, recipe uh, for success. Father Jaffer, thank you so much for joining Access Middle East. Pleasure.
That was the CEO of Crescent Enterprises, Bader Joffer. Until next time, be sure to check us out at CNBC.com, or you can send us an email with your thoughts at accessmiddleeast at CNBC.com. Until next time, I'm Hatha Gamble from the World Economic Forum in Davos.